no late changes on either team. Pat Gilroy surprised many with the calibre of the players he left out of this team. Seven survivors from the side that lost to Tyrone last August. Three championship newcomers. Dennis Bastic at full-back, Alan Hubbard in the left corner and Mark Daverin at full forward. They have their strongest bench for years with the likes of Whelan, Sherlock, Ryan and Cullen left out of the first 15. Goalkeeper Paddy O'Rourke is one of two Meath players making their championship debuts this afternoon. The other wing forward, Shane McInerney, who lines out alongside captain Stephen Bray and Brian Mead. Anthony Moyles named in at right cornerback, but he may not start there. Niall McCaig is at centre-back. Joe Sheridan and Paderburn are on the subs bench. Keeney going low. Brogan lets it off, and there's a gap there for Darren McGee. McGee! Dragged it wide, what a chance that was for Darren McGee. He fluffed his line right in front of Paddy O'Rourke's goal. Yeah, wonderful bit of composed play by Keeney that time. Assist to Brogan, Brogan great vision, shows the ball to Darren McGee. Again, he rushed his shot a little bit and had a very bad miss. That was a great goal, a goal opportunity. Alan Brogan, McKay trying to get it across to Brogan. Paddy Andrews, Andrews looking for number two. They double their advantage, but Meade's defence got dragged all over the place and Brogan put it on a plate for Paddy Andrews. Again, was given all the room in the world out under the Cusick stand to actually set the ball up. It's picked up by Cormac McGuinness. McGuinness, a player who loves to attack. He's got Cuevin King outside him. King lets it off to Stephen Bray. Former All-Star, confronted by Griffith, Brian Farrell. Farrell moves it in, Quevin King couldn't hang on to it. McInerney for me, and it's been a brilliant few minutes for me. Three points to no score, they were all over the place after nine minutes, but look at it now, all square. Mark Ward gives that some welly, Key Ward chasing it down, and Ward has it, Brian Farrell to his right. Ward through, and me, they're on fire in Croke Park sending over five successive points into Hill 16. Bernard Brogan. Owen Harrington there with him. To Alan Brogan, passing the Meath's 45-metre line. Paul Flynn. Jer Brennan, this is where he likes to be, Brennan. And that's why. Simple, effective. Five points apiece. Level for the second time. Paul Flynn of Dublin. Again, it's belted in high on the breeze. Dabber trying to get to a brilliant catch by Kevin Riley. That should inspire many around him. Anthony Moyles. Meath taking their time, and Anthony Moyles has been caught. That was desperate defending, and it's slotted over by Bernard Brogan, but gifted on a plate. Moyles is expecting a free or wanted a free, and he handed it straight to his clubmate from Oliver Plunkett's Bernard Brogan. Such an easy point, but that's terrible defending. Yeah, a wonderful bit of authoritative play. A moment or two earlier by Kevin Riley in front of the goals, and then a bit of, you know, loitering and dallying. Just watch the catch, first of all, by Kevin Riley. Great authority around the square. Brennan tackled high, but still he goes. Alan Brogan, a roar around Croke Park. This is a good spell, that's Alan Hubbard, the cornerback. And Hubbard hangs that up there, difficult one for the goalkeeper. No goal. Keeney was in the square. It was Alan Hubbard who sent this in. You just watch it again, Paddy O'Rourke I think loses a little bit in the wind. But again, Conal Keeney is in there before the ball arrives. And again, the referee had the whistle blown. Yes, he's definitely in there before the ball arrives, but Paddy O'Rourke, oh, just lost his balance. Not a great contact on that from O'Rourke. Alan Brogan missed the last one. That has sailed over with yards to spare. Beautiful kick from Alan Brogan. They've a three-point lead and they've got over their sticky patch. Yeah, well, that's simplicity personified. Alan Brogan just again eyes the target, has confidence in his own ability. David Henry. Dabra not out in front, but it breaks as Miles and Riley got in each other's way. Seamus Kenny coming across. 
Big possibilities for Dublin here for Conal Keeney. Moves in closer, Keeney, going with the fist. Oh dear. Well, he had two players free. Bernard Brogan was perhaps in the best position of the two waiting for this. Yeah, but Bernard Brogan, I think, and Mark Davern yeah. were perfectly placed to actually get the ball fed back out to them. Mead waiting a long time to add to their tally of five points. Mead again unable to secure possession from their own kick out. Brogan to Barry Cahill. Cahill. Oh, goal chance. But it's gone over for the point, has it? Yes, indeed, it has. It was Mark Davern in all the way after this. Cahill, I think, was going for the point. Paddy O'Rourke, for all his height, wasn't able to deal with that, and Davern just manages to touch it over the bar. And McConnell has gifted that straight to Keane Ward, Nigel Crawford, and Stephen Bray. Bray skips away from the tackle. Here's Quibin King, the new full forward, and King, yes. formerly a left half back. You heard him scream, yes. And the reason for that is that he has narrowed the gap to back to within five. They've had the first three possessions in the second half. They've one point to show for those three attacks. Mark Ward is going to come off the Meath team. Shane McInerney for three in a row. And Meath are not gone yet. That fighting spirit that they've called on so many times over the years in evidence again. Still behind, but now only three down. Yes, still behind, but showing a lot of the Mead character, the Mead passion, and the Mead resolve. So Dublin yet to score in the second half. Mead on a run of three in a row. Seamus Kenny. Alan Hubbard, he was behind his man, couldn't hang on to it. And now it's Keane Ward. Ward, the much taller man, and he just bounced Hubbard out of the way. Ward sends it up high. Farrell trying to get there, and he has, and that's a great score. David Henry was just eased out of the way from Brian Farrell. They're on quite, quite a run now, and what was six at half time is now two. Yeah, again, a hit and hope crossfield ball by uh, Keane Ward that time again, beautifully judged by Brian Farrell. Uses hips to great effect to make room for himself and to win the ball. And again, instinctively shoots in sight and again shoots four in a row for me. That's a great start for me to the second half. You got a glimpse of Kieran Wheel, and he's going to be the first man in as a substitute for Dublin. Ross McConnell. Pat Gilroy not hanging around, he wants to take action straight away. Here's Alan Brogan, they still lead, it doesn't feel that way. And now they lead by three, do they? White flag goes up, there's your answer, 12-9. It's the first of the second half, and again, it's been all the way through this game. It's gone one way, then the other. Will Dublin go on a scoring spree now? Here is Pat O'Byrne, straight into it. Brian Farrell, and Farrell sends that very high, and it's also very accurate. So two points in a row for me, then it's a two-point game again. Yeah, again, a wonderful score from distance again by Brian Farrell. With all the new faces in, the Dublin fans were certainly going to buy into the new regime, but yeah, yeah, questions about the new look Dublin team still to be answered even if they do win this match here's Joe Sheridan again they put it up high and you can put that one up because they're back to within two we're in the last minute of normal time there'll be three possibly four to be added on and Sheridan perhaps he could have come on earlier and Dublin just keeping the ball, and Mees can't get it back. Now it's Blaine Kelly, and Kelly steadies down for the shot, and another wide, and he missed that by a long way. 17 wides for Dublin. Mees will have one more attack. I know we have two minutes signal by the fourth official. No, they won't. The two minutes well up. 
and they're still play on. They haven't heard the whistle. And Sheridan puts it over the bar, but the players did not hear the whistle. And Dublin have fallen over the winning line, no question, by 14 points to 12. The Gilroy era begins with a faltering victory.